Hello guys and welcome back to another tutorial for MCreator. Today what we're going to do is get all these structures put into a actual structure file. I've basically gone under the um, part here. It's a little bit laggy with all the, uh, what do you call it, the structure voids being shown. But basically what I've done is just dug some tunnels underneath it and uh, set up the individual squares for the uh, three by three area that I need for all the base property stuff. And then what we're going to do is probably spawn in probably about one, one of them, I guess, um, maybe the center one or pro actually we'll probably be spawning in the this one right here, which is the northwest corner one and then we'll make sure that it's offsetted underneath so it can float into the right part and anything that is in the red area is basically going to be the part that um, can be replaced with other terrain and stuff like that so it'll kind of blend a little bit more nicer with that and then uh, we have all these uh, chunks that we have to basically fill out now we're going to use uh, Golderion's uh, chunk manager plugin so we can actually load the chunks properly on the side and not worry about the um, basically the structure crashing the game or anything like that so it can properly load and then we have our structures over here so let's quickly save our structures we've got these all built and decorated I believe I uh, changed the I ended up overwriting one of the files uh, structures but I had the other one for the most part uh, backed up so we could do that so all these are basically are properly set up now so these ones over here and that one over there so they're all interior decorated this again will go in the very top part of that uh, flat part right up there it'll go right on top so once we get this all settled let's find where all these little pieces are so I think there's uh, one over here this is the northwest corner for the structure. I have all the names pre-filled so all we need to do is basically save them and then we'll save that one and then we'll have to go underneath the structure over here for the other one. So I've also labeled what corner they are so it's easier to basically figure out what we need to basically where we need to actually place it. So now that we got that done uh, let's go up here and I'm just going to quickly take a look at um, our chunk make sure that yeah so basically what what we're going to do here is uh, when we actually um, ooh, that was weird um, when we actually spawn in the structure we need to go 16 inwards and uh, 16 16 basically this way and then 16 basically this way and 16 up so basically that will offset it to rate in this chunk right here so that's what we're going to do for that and let's just save all these parts here it's a little bit laggy I'm a little bit concerned about that but once it loads in it should be fine just go over to here save this one and then we'll save this one I think it's mostly the rendering of all the lines and stuff from the structure voids that's causing a little bit of the lag so just something to keep in mind. Uh, obviously the larger the structure the larger potential that it might cause lag when it's actually loading so keep that in mind when you're building really large structures like this. And um, I'll teach you the basics of how to basically preload and unload chunks. Now it's important to unload them after or they stay loaded and uh, that can actually cause a quite a bit lag if it's not properly done so well, I'll teach you basically how to unload them as well. Okay, so we'll go all the way out here, and I think that was the last one. All right, so now that we got that, I'm just going to check all our um, structures. So we got the houses, bottom, uh, there should be nine of those. Yep. All right, all right. So now that we got that done, let's go into um, Minecraft.net and I'll show you where to download that particular plugin that we're going to be using. All right, so if we go on to the plugins for MCreator, so to get there, what you want to do is go to community and then plugins, and then you'll have probably the fabric generator and a few other a few other of them on the top there. And then if you scroll down, you'll see chunk manager. 
you want this one right here. Uh, basically what this does is it allows for forcing um, chunks to load as well as unloading uh, chunks. So you want this to basically um, be able to preload the chunks before you actually spawn the, the structure itself and this will help with the crashing and stuff like that that I constantly have. Uh, one thing to note with this though is it can uh, change the chunk to being modified when it does do this. So um, just be careful on how much you actually do change and try to keep it the structure is a little bit far apart. So once you basically uh, downloaded this and installed it uh, to install plugins, all you need to do is basically go to File and was it File, M Creator, Workspace. I think it's File, and then haven't done it for a while. So uh, let's see, Resources, Run, Build, Remote Workspace, Window. Uh, right, I think you have to get to the main thing, so probably uh, restart M Creator. I know that you can get to it through the M Creator screen, and uh, it might be through preferences. The cat is chewing the doorstop right now. <laughs> Alright, so if you go to preferences, I'm pretty sure, and then if you go to um, plugins. Uh, manage plugins and then you can basically load plugin and then select the um, zip file for the plugin itself and then once it's loaded in you need to restart M Crater um, or any particular workspaces and then you'll get the procedure blocks that you need to actually use in this particular system. Um, I already have it installed it's right here under right under this one right here it's called chunk manager so we have that all set up already just going to close out of that because we already have the thing loaded and everything like that. So now that we got this all, the, the plugin installed, and we need to actually go to resources, structures, and then import Minecraft structure. And then we have to import all of our structures except for that save one that we basically used. So I'm just going to import all these. I'm going to actually delete that save one so I don't need to do it later. Uh, so C, E and uh, N. These are all the direction sides and stuff like that. So this is the northeast corner and then we got the uh, northwest corner and this is for that big uh, plane part thing that we have uh, for underneath the structure and then we want the south, southeast and southwest and then we need west and then we need okay that should be one two three four five six seven eight nine that's perfect so we're on to the houses now so the northeast and then we need the northwest and then we need the southeast and then oh, and then the southwest so those are all our structures that we basically got for all the parts that we need. So now that we got that done, uh, what we need to do is actually create our structure file itself. Now I'm going to be spawning in the northwest bottom part and then offsetting it so it is uh, roughly 16 blocks underground and that will allow us to uh, have a smoother terrain when we're actually flattening the area and stuff. So we need to create a structure spawn and then I'm just going to call it, um, it doesn't really matter what you call it, it's just as long as it's unique to the mod and has no uh, interesting characters or stuff. So let's say uh, forest village and then we're going to go create spawn structure. And then we're going to leave the spawn chance problem. Well, we'll set this to 100,000, and then it's a little bit easier to find. And then what we want to do is choose our northwest corner for the bottom, and we're going to offset the y, the height to negative 116. So it's like that. We don't need to offset these two coordinates. That's fine the way it is. And I'm going to actually set this to. Oh, no, not blocks of the biome to the forest biome if I can find it. I think these have been reorganized. 
by the looks of it, which is nice. So we'll do the mutated forest, forest, and forest hills. So we'll put those in those three particular biomes. And then the last thing that we need to do is actually create a um, instance. So uh, when on structure gener generated instance, and then what we're going to do is basically create a procedure to do a few things in this particular area. So with the particular chunk manager, you'll see that there is a chunk manager um, tab right here with all the different types of blocks. Uh, a lot of these are variable based, so we actually need to define our local variable for our uh, chunk manager. So what we're going to do is go to local variables, set a chunk variable, and I would suggest just calling it something like my chunk and then what we're going to do is we're just going to make sure that's set up like that. After which we're going to get the chunk and we're going to go ahead and apply this, get chunk, and then we're gonna apply that to our variable. So it's like this, so we can actually get the variable for that particular chunk. So after we've done that, uh, what we need to do is we need to Go ahead and force load a bunch of chunks in a certain area from this particular block. So the chunks that are actually used is about a six by six area of um, chunks located in a certain area. So starting at the north north uh, west corner, and then we need to load all the way to the southeast corner. So all those chunks within, so there's about six by six. So we're gonna use a repeater for this and we're actually going to set this to um, six and for six times, because we know that there is six chunks that we need to go one direction and our other six is the other direction. So this is basically covers each chunk individually. Uh, after which we're going to need to set our X and Z location for the chunks. So we're going to create two more variables. Uh, this one is going to be pause X and the other one is going to be pause Z. So these need to be number variables and then pause Z. And that's usually what I just call the variables for my positions. And we're, this one also needs to be a number variable. So once we've done that, uh, we need to actually set up our system. So we're going to put this um, block right in the middle here in our center repeater. And we're actually going to go ahead and uh, set our pause X to pause X here. And then we're going to set our other variable to pause Z. So uh, this goes right here. And then what we need to do is grab our number variable and we're going to put X here and Z here so we can basically tell it to load those particular chunks. All right, so now that we have that all set up, uh, we need to actually count, set up the counting system for basically um, creating the script. Now this is going to be our X position counter. So X counter, and then this one down here is going to be our Z counter. And then what we can do from here is we're going to increase Z every time that this particular repeater runs. So we're gonna get a math operator and then we're gonna place that down here and we're gonna increase this by, um, I believe we're gonna to need to increase that by 16. So we're gonna increase that by 16 every time that the chunk basically is counted. So if it's in the 16, because chunks are 16 by 16, right? So we need to increase this by 16. And we're going to set our variable for Z to be Z as well. So it's going to set Z, Z plus 16. And what this is gonna do is basically get 16 blocks on positive, uh, go positive Z, positive 16 uh, blocks from where it's basically running. And then it's just gonna keep counting up. So once we got that done, uh, we actually need to reset this once it's finished setting, basically testing the Z coordinate. So this will run six, six times. And once it's finished, we need to reset Z back to the default state. So our default state is just the 
general location where the block is running from, which is where the access point of the structure is. So the bottom northwest corner. And we need to do the same on this particular procedure for X. So we're just going to basically copy over that and set that up to X. And then we can basically count over that particular amount. And that's all we need to do right here, at least. Um, now what we need to do is actually spawn in the other structures. So now that the chunks are all loaded, this is basically what's loading the chunks right here, this block right here. It's basically going to go, okay, load this chunk, load that chunk, load this chunk, and then it's going to go, okay, and we're going to offset that 16 blocks. And then it's going to do this six more times, and then this, and then six more times until it does it uh, whatever six times six is. And then all those particular chunks in between are loaded. So we need to also use the same kind of script to unload them. Now, um, we actually haven't loaded the chunks. We've basically just set our variable to get the chunks. So we actually need to go back to chunk manager and force load. And what we're going to do is we're just going to have it set to our variable here, force load our variable and set this to true. Now, if it's, if it's true, it basically means force load the trunk. If it's set to false, then you won't, this basically means that the chunk is no longer loaded. So basically true to enable the chunk to be force loaded and false after. Now, after we've run the script for spawning our structures, we need to basically copy all this whole system over and put it at the end of the script and then set this to false. So I'll cover that in just a second. I'm actually going to export this right now so we can actually import it later on and uh, it'll be a little bit easier to do. So I'm just gonna save this as procedure one. All right, so now that we've done that, uh, we need to go to our world management. And then what we're going to do is place structure. And uh, now the relative coordinates are going to be where the structure, the first structure that we're actually running this from uh, is going to be generating. So if we want to go and spawn another structure in, uh, we need to offset these coordinates 16 blocks for each part. So for example, um, our structures are 32 wide and 32 long, right? So we need to actually offset this 32, I believe. Uh, let's set this to... Now if we're going, this is our northwest uh, so we want to go north, uh, pardon me, uh, west, I believe. So we want west. Yeah, so we're going to go west, and then we want to increase the value of z, because we don't want to offset our x coordinate. So we're going to offset this plus. 32 and that should be the coordinates for where this part needs to be spawning. Uh, we're going to leave these to our default state so none and none and then what we're going to do is basically spawn in our other coordinates so this one should be south west which means we need to increase this to 64. So as you can see we've basically increased the number for z coordinate um, plus 32 each time. So now that that's basically done, uh, we have two, basically one row set in because the first structure that we basically are generating is the structure that um, is at the northwest corner. So when we're actually spawning in the west and then we need to do southwest and now we need to basically do one over on 16 or the x coordinate. So this should be 32 and this should be um, north, so bottom north, and that shouldn't be the house one, that actually should be the south west bottom, because we need the bottom part, we're working on the bottom part right now. All right, and then what we need to do is go and grab this one, we're gonna delete the x coordinate, and we're gonna increase that by that, and this should be 32, and this should be the center one, so this should be C. And then what we need to do is go ahead again and set this to 64. And then this one should be uh, south, 
And then what we need to do is basically duplicate these parts and we're gonna set this to X and this should be 64. And that should be the south, or pardon me, north, um, northeast corner. So northeast, and then we want to go down, uh, let's see here. Delete that, place this in here. And this should be the east one. And then over here, this needs to be 64 and 64, which should be the southeast one. So southeast, and then we just want to confirm that we have it all properly set up. So southwest, west, north, that's all correct. These two are the first row. These are the second row, those are all different, good. And then this is the last row on the other side there. So now the whole bottom should be able set, should be set up perfectly fine. Uh, now what we need to do is we need to spawn in our actual building on top. So what we're going to do now is go down to the house section. We're going to set northwest. And then what we need to do is actually go and increase this number by, whoop, delete that. And then we're going to increase X, Y, and Z uh, to 16 and 16 and 16. So that'll be our first location where we're actually spawning in that. And then what we want to do is go and do our uh, southwest one, which should be the 32, I need a calculator for this one here. So 32 plus 16 is 48. I always have a hard time remembering that number for some reason. <laughs> All right, so 48, and that will be on our Z coordinate. So 40, 48. So it's basically 16 because we have we need to offset it 16 um, blocks, and then we need to basically add additional 32, which is the structure size. So that's where this number comes in to be 48 because we combine those two numbers to get 48. All right, so that's basically that part. And then we have the other house uh, part here, which is the northeast one. And this will be um, 16, and that will be 48. And the last one here should be 48 and 48. And that will be the southeast one right here. So that's all our structures in place. And now that we've got that part done, what we need to do is actually reset our pause X and our pause Z. And then we're going to basically just clone this part right here. I actually didn't need to save it, I don't think. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that this is set to false. So it's going to run again, the um, basically that procedure that we're loading the chunks with. And instead of loading it, we're going to tell it to unload the chunks after we've basically spawned in all these structures. Now, if it's n if you don't unload the chunks, then they're going to be running in the background and you're gonna have a lot more processing and stuff. And every time a new chunk is loaded by structure, it's gonna cause a lot of lag. So make sure to unload it after, or you're gonna run into a lot of performance issues and stuff. So make sure to do exactly this particular setup. All right, so now that we got that done, uh, we can basically just save this and uh, additional generation we don't need to worry about. All this is set up. Um, we don't need to worry about any of the other settings, I don't think, in Forest. And then we're gonna save that and then we should be able to test it out. All right, so one thing to note is if you're running into issues with actually loading the world um, with that particular script that I created, uh, the reason for that is it's basically um, having issues with the spawn chunks uh, for force loading and stuff like that when the player's loading in. The easiest way around that is to basically just tell it to not uh, generate. I'll cover this script that I use to basically allow me to get into the actual world. So uh, in the only downside to that is we actually have to go a little bit away from the actual uh, spawn area. So I've basically set it up. So if we go TP at A and then 
any one of these directions, uh, roughly two eight was it one two eight zero and then we'll be able to kind of okay that's actually really bad we have a desert here i don't think there's any forests around here okay let's try a different coordinate we'll see if we can't offset this a little bit so we'll do negative okay this is a depending if that's hold on a second i don't think our coordinates are right Negative one, two, eight, zero. Yeah. Oh, I see what we're what's going on. Okay, let's uh, set that to there. All right. So this is a forest. Uh, anywhere around here could be uh, one of those structures, uh, as long as we're going one, two, eight, zero. So that direction. We'll need to go this direction in order to basically have the probability of it basically generating. So as long as we're on uh, negative eight, let's do negative one, two, eight, zero. This is an ocean. Let's try a positive one. Okay, this is more probable. All right, so let's see if there's a forest around here. We need to go above 1280 and that brings us to over here somewhere. All right, so let's check out this uh, forest biome over here and we'll see if we can't find one roughly in there. No, it won't actually be there because that's on the other side of the coordinates. So it could basically generate anywhere on the other side here. So anywhere on this side, it will be able to spawn in it should. So just have to keep an eye out for it. Just make sure that our coordinates are right. Yep. Okay, so I'm not seeing any particular structure popping up, and that's all ocean. So we'll continue going out this way. Um, I'm not sure. I haven't tested this particular theory before, so it might not work. Um. I have done it through another method, so we might do a part five maybe and see if we can't get it to tweak the code a little bit so it actually works a little bit more proper. Now this is a regular village, so that won't be what we're looking for. Just have to keep flying around, I guess. We can probably go a little bit that way now. Okay, there's that. There's a little bit of a forest over here. Still not seeing any structures. Now, with the amount that the structures was spawning in the spawn chunks, I should be seeing some structures by now, I think. And we're pretty much outside of the zone. We're 2,000 blocks away, so we should be able, be able to see some of this, some of the structures and stuff, but I'm not seeing any. Uh, the other alternative is what we can do is basically what we did with the temple and basically have it so we use a block to generate instead of um, basically the, the structure. But the chunks will still have to be loaded, unfortunately. So yeah, I'm not seeing any particular structure loading in other than the vanilla ones. So I'll have to come back to this in part five after doing some thorough testing. And I'll see if I can't set up the structures to be a little bit more compatible with the chunk loading and stuff like that. But uh, outside of that, we I basically explained the basics of um, how to set up the chunk loader part. As long as you unload the chunks after, it should generate. I have experimented with the chunk loading app, like with other projects, um, mainly a village building one, and I got a little bit further with that, and it does fix the loading issue, but I'm not seeming to, the way that I currently have it set up, it doesn't seem to want to load in the structures, unfortunately. So we'll have to take a different approach with the script um, in the next video. So we'll be continuing this next episode and seeing if we can't get that 
structure to actually spawn in. So if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.